Netflix is losing millions of dollars. Welcome back, everybody. Today, I want to look at the most unusual story when it comes to a streaming service trying to acquire content. For this episode, we're going to be looking at the show called Conquest. Now, if you haven't heard about this, don't feel bad because it was never released. In fact, it actually wasn't even made. But the story of its inception, its production, and, well, the director, I find pretty darn fascinating, and I think you will too. If nothing, this is a good, uh, what do you call it, cautionary tale for streaming services. And ultimately the lesson would be vet your talent carefully. In 2018, it was a little bit different when it comes to the landscape of the streaming wars. Netflix, Amazon Prime was still enormously popular, but the competition like Disney Plus, Max, and Apple TV had not yet entered the game. But it was on the horizon. Netflix and Prime, they knew it. And they did their best to stock the platforms that they owned to ensure that their services remain in a dominant position. So much so, they seemingly would look to some interesting sources for their content. This is how Carl Wrench came into the employ of Netflix. Just a little backstory on Wrench. Somehow, he directed the 2013 movie 47 Ronin. It sucked. Didn't make any money, and I really can't think of anybody who cared for this movie. But somehow, Carl Wrench was able to get Netflix to give him $60 million to produce a sci-fi series centered around artificial humans or something. This happened after Amazon was set to purchase the series. And I'm thinking Netflix was suffering from a case of FOMO. And at the last minute, they decided to swoop in and purchase the project. So at this point, things are looking good. I mean, as well as they're going to look. And the streamer is taking a chance on an unproven director with a story to tell. So could this be good? Maybe? Trust me, it won't. But we'll get back to that tale. Netflix's VP of original content, Cindy Holland, not only gave Wrench $60 million for his original IP, she also granted him final approval over the finished product. Again, what could go wrong? Perhaps I'm being a little bit too harsh on this filmmaker. Let us take a look at his upbringing and his introduction into the Hollywood system. Carl Wrench grew up in the San Fernando Valley area, and he was a son of an insurance exec. Wrench, doing what he had to do to pursue his passion, would rent camera equipment and go about making some short films. Wrench graduated from Brown University, and after his college career, he was lucky enough to get employed by the legendary Ridley Scott in his production company. He learned quite a bit working on commercials and trying to soak up all the knowledge he could from the infamous director. In 2010, Carl made a short film commissioned by the Dutch electronics brand Philips. It did well and got some attention at the Cannes Lions International Advertising Festival. Honestly, I didn't know that was a thing. At some point, Wrench was considered for directing a prequel to Alien, which of course the original was directed by Ridley Scott in 1979. Universal Studios instead had him direct 47 Ronin instead. The movie was released on Christmas Day of 2013, and like I said before, it did not perform well. Universal ended up taking a significant loss with this movie. After that disaster, Carl and his wife, Gabriela Rosas Bentancor, began working on a sci-fi series titled White Horse. The premise of the show revolved around an individual who creates an artificial life called the Organic Intelligence. OI. I guess they also kind of look human. This OI is sent to hotspots around the world and helps the population with humanitarian assistance. But as the story develops, you find out that the OI has an agenda to turn against humanity. The title of the show, White Horse, alludes to the first horsemen of the apocalypse. 
It's in this part of Wrench's career that he learned how to save money by bypassing union regulations in Hollywood and use European actors and crew. Wrench milked every bit of effort from his poor crew and cast, once by shooting 24 hours continuously in Kenya and again in Romania, where a lead actress had to seek medical attention for hypothermia after a shoot in snowy conditions without proper attire. When Wrench's money ran dry, he was able to secure funds from the production company 30 West. Carl didn't meet his deadline and 30 West wanted control of the project, but of all people, Mr. Keanu Reeves stepped in and became a producer and was able to keep the project in Wrench's control. Thanks to good guy Keanu and his financial contribution, Carl was able to complete the project and edit it into six episodes of around 10 minutes in length. Wrench wanted to use this short series as a pilot in hopes of getting a full 13 episode run. When it was all said and done, Netflix was able to purchase this series based on the strength of these short mini episodes. Now that the streaming giant bought the series, well, this is where problems start to happen. The collaboration between Carl Wrench and Netflix unfortunately didn't go as well as either party had hoped. In fact, even today, not a single episode of the show has ever been delivered to the streaming platform. At the time, being 2018, Netflix agreed to pay $61.2 million in installments for the rights to the series, which had been renamed Conquest. By the way, I think that's a better name. Again, they also gave Carl Wrench Final Cut privileges and assurances that Wrench and Rosas, who is a producer on the show at this point, would be attached to future seasons and spinoffs for life. In their quest for streaming supremacy, Netflix overlooked some major red flags with Wrench, like a dispute with 30 West and other investors in the original short series that Carl had made. Another concern was internal dynamics within their own management team. Scott Stuber, who was a producer on 47 Ronin, had clashed with Wrench during the time of their shoot. This is an important detail because he ended up being hired by Netflix to join their movie division after they had acquired Conquest from Wrench. During the filming process, they really didn't seek Stuber's input, and that's unfortunate because I'm pretty sure he would have told them a lot. Now that Wrench had his funding, he was under the gun, so to speak to deliver. Conquest filmed in different locations like Sao Paulo, Brazil, Montebello, Uruguay, and Budapest. While shooting in Sao Paulo, it was reported that Wrench was mistreating his cast and crew with instances of shouting, cursing, and really just kind of being a massive dick. Netflix did get word of this behavior and had a nice little coaching session with Carl. Honestly, that was probably all it was. Wrench also seemed to be hanging on by a thread when it came to his mental state. Wrench suffered from sleep deprivation while he was in Budapest. He also made accusations against his wife, even going so far as claiming she was plotting his assassination. Good times. Allegedly, there were instances where Wrench threw objects at his now ex-wife, by the way, and punched through walls. Wrench does have a diagnosis of autism and ADHD, He's also been prescribed Vyvanse, an amphetamine for treating ADHD, but some crew members and his then wife, Mrs. Rojas, were claiming that Carl Ranch was definitely overusing this drug. This could cause mania, delirium, and even psychosis in some cases. The crew of Conquest, along with Gabriela Rosas and Carl's brother, attempted an intervention where Carl did agree to have a sober companion watch over him, but then he asked that person to leave after a few days. Now that filming is underway, Wrench decided to ask Netflix for more money. In March of 2020, Carl Wrench asked for additional funding. This is after Netflix had invested around $44 million into the production of Conquest. Netflix did eventually pony up more dough when Wrench expressed concerns about the project falling apart without more money. The streaming giant provided an extra $11 million 
for Carl to complete this project. Carl Wrench used these additional funds to expand the script with the intent of shooting these extra scenes. Netflix did attach conditions with this extra funding. They would have to approve the expanded script within five weeks, otherwise Wrench would have to allocate the remaining funds toward getting the original script completed and deliver it to Netflix. Wrench transferred a large portion of his funds into his personal brokerage account and started doing some good old-fashioned day trading. In this case, Carl would invest in stock options and eventually lose almost $6 million of Netflix funding. Soon afterwards, Carl's mental state also degenerated. Carl was sending wild texts with amazing theories about the origins of the coronavirus and claiming that he could predict lightning strikes and volcanic eruptions. He also accused chestnuts of being lazy. Now that last part's from uh, Dr. Evil. Anyway, I digress. Around September of 2020, Netflix made a significant change to its management team. Some of the people who greenlit and gave more money to this filmmaker were either gone or leaving Netflix. After several months, a couple of Netflix executives named Peter Freelander and Rochelle Gerson asked Gabriela Rosas for access to the shot footage of Conquest to see how much work was done and how much more work was needed in order to release the project. Gabriella wasn't able to provide this footage due to fear of Carl's mental state. This was actually a pretty valid fear on Rosas because Carl would send emails to Rochelle Gerson claiming that he discovered a method to track the coronavirus signal that apparently originates from beneath the surface of the planet. Who knew? Let's look at the aftermath and the fallout from this crazy set of circumstances. In March of 2021, Netflix made the decision to pull the plug on funding for Conquest. Carl Wrench was made aware of this via email from Rochelle Gerson. She did let him know that he's free to seek funding from other sources, but any potential acquirer would have to reimburse Netflix for the expenses incurred. Of course, this really didn't go over well with Carl. So much so that he sent a series of emails accusing Netflix of breach contract and implications of discrimination based on Wrench's mental health. It's kind of weird because he mentions this, but he also claims he's mentally stable. After a messy breakup between Netflix and Carl Wrench, the latter took the remaining money he received from the streaming giant and invested it into Dogecoin, a cryptocurrency with a sassy dog on it. Unlike his previous foray into high-risk investing, this one actually worked. When he cashed out, it was for around $27 million, and Carl was understandably elated about this. So did he pay back what he made to Netflix? Hell no, he didn't. He went on a shopping spree, let me tell you. A total of five Rolls Royces, a Ferrari, Vacheron Constantine watch, worth nearly 400k, along with closets full of designer clothing. All in all, this spending spree totaled around almost $9 million. Carl claims that everything he purchased was for the project. The vehicles would be used as props, and I'm guessing that would be true of everything else, the costuming, the watch, you know, blah, blah, blah. Of course, at this point, Wrench and Gabriela Rosas were in the middle of a very messy divorce. Rosas' lawyers claiming that these high-end products were to conceal Carl's earnings from his cryptocurrency winnings. Currently, Netflix and Carl Wrench are locked in a confidential arbitration. What we do know, though, is Netflix wants their $55 million back. And Carl Wrench claims that Netflix is guilty of breach of contract and owes him... $14 million in damages. There's currently no plans to release any footage that has been shot for Conquest. But if it's anything like 47 Ronin, that might be a good thing. So this was a very big ouch for Netflix and they're still, they're still suffering through it. But I can understand their thinking on this because when it comes down to it, in 2018, the streaming wars were about to really go into full swing with Max, Disney Plus, and all the other ones. Netflix wanted to keep their position of dominance secure and were willing to take chances. And some of those chances paid off really well with like Squid Games and shows of that nature. 
this one didn't. And it just goes to show you that not everything's gonna be a winner. But still, having said that, I think the streaming giant could have vetted their talent a little bit better. I mean, if they just had a watch along party, a 47 Ronin, none of this might have happened. But of course, those are just my opinions and I would love to hear yours. Feel free to express yourself in the comment section and as always, fare thee well, my friends. Take care. Cue the music.